So I'm going to start with the clothes and uh, then we'll take it from there. Uh, basically, <coughs> starting from, from the feet up. So, you know, goes without saying, a good pair of hiking boots would be good for backpacking. Okay, so that's what I start out with. And uh, then my socks, I use the Smart Wool, I think they're the trekking socks. They're like one step below the mountaineering ones. They're, the mountaineering ones are the thickest ones you can get. So, you know, the, the thickness of your socks does matter. You want to make sure that it works with the fit of your boot. You don't want to constrict your feet too much. But uh, a little more padding is good, you know, to, to try and prevent blisters. So the, the more padding you can get out of your socks, probably the better. I've always used, I'm kind of old school. I started out using liner socks and I always stuck with that and it's always worked for me. Um, you know, there's different schools of thought on that. Um, you guys can go online and read up on it. Um, this just always works for me and it feels good. Um, and these are, I think they're Fox River brand and they're silver lined so it kind of cuts down on a, you know, silvers and a natural antibacterial so it cuts down on a little bit of the the foot odor the the funk so um, I use the liners the socks and then I'll usually I don't always do it but I'll usually take it even um, this is uh, you know for a weekend trip I'll, I'll take an, an extra pair of, of socks just in case I fall in a creek or something and my feet get wet that way I can, I have the extra pair, I can, you know, it's not much more weight. Um, if I get soaked, I can throw those on and uh, let the other ones dry in the meantime. So, uh, the smart wool socks. And then, um, what I'll usually wear going out is the shorts. These are convertible pants. So, what I'll usually do is, is just take these, nothing more. Um, then these you don't need an extra pair of pants especially not for a weekend or a three-day two-night hike um, but you know even for a week long this is all I take um, if you want to wash them in a creek you can you know um, along the way for a week-long trip but usually I don't I just end up wearing these the whole time um, and uh, here you've got your shorts and your pants, you know, your, the legs zip off. And so you've got everything in one right there, no extra weight as far as an extra pair of pants. Um, and you really don't need anything more than that. So I'll, I'll, these are my, my shorts that I wear on the way out um, when I'm hiking um, without the legs on and depending on how cold it is. And uh, so that's, that's all I take as far as that goes. And everything is synthetic too. I just want to make that point. I don't take anything cotton. Cotton just uh, retains the water too much. It doesn't dry out. And so, uh, you know, you'll, you'll end up staying cold with the cotton. Um, and also, against your body, you know, you'll have chafing or blisters, you know, as far as feet goes, um, you know, with cotton. So you want to avoid cotton if you can. Um, same thing goes for the underwear. I, the underwear is synthetic and uh, I just take, you know, for a weekend I just take one pair. I'll usually take two pairs for a, a week long trip. And uh, then I'll take uh, just your basic uh, synthetic t-shirt. This is like an REI brand t-shirt. I think I got it at a used gear sale for cheap. You can get these, you can get them at Walmart too, you know, you can get synthetic uh, t-shirts there. Um, there's like body armor stuff, you know, you, you can get. So <clears throat> just make sure it's synthetic so that it dries out because your, your t-shirt that you're going to be wearing most of the time really is going to get pretty sweaty and so you want to make sure that dries out pretty quick when you're done hiking and, and sitting around camp. Um, Apart from that, as far as clothing goes, you always want to make sure you take a good base layer. Um, uh, it's just 
that's just basic for me. You know, it, it, you always take a base layer because it gets cold no matter where you're at. And even in the desert, you know, I've been in the desert before and it, get, it gets cold at night. And I, I want my long johns. So get a good synthetic pair of um, long underwear, you know. Um, depending on the conditions you think you're going to be, be in, you can get that like a, a lightweight or midweight. You know, this is like a marmot. I think a lightweight um, long underwear bottom and this is like a Patagonia Capilane um, but uh, you know you can pick your brand with that Patagonia is nice for the the long underwear the Capilane but it's pricey um, so you, you know look on the web and try and get a get a deal on that um, that's the way I get all my stuff um, <coughs> I don't I don't think I pay full price for anything. So the other thing that I like to take is uh, besides the t-shirt and then the, the long john top, I take this too just as an extra um, top that I can just throw on real quick and it's kind of soft to the touch so it feels real good and uh, and just it, it makes it real quick. That way I don't have to throw on my jacket if I get a, a chill or something like that. Um, I do keep this keep this handy and I also use it to cover my pillow which I'll show you what my pillow ends up being but um, that the next layer as far as that goes would be my down jacket now some people might think this is a little overboard especially in the summer you know but for the guys who have been up there, you know, up around Tyara Pass or in the Mammoth Lakes area, and it's, you know, you're at 10, 10,000 feet, 9 to 10,000 feet, it gets cold. I don't like to be cold. I, I like to be warm. And um, so this, this piece of clothing is really versatile to me. Um, it, it packs down small, it's light, and it's, got, it's full of warmth. I mean, you're, you're not going to get cold wearing this down jacket. So this really makes it to where you can go in a lot of different conditions as far as the cold goes, and uh, you're going to make it through being warm. That, you might be restricted as far as it, whether or not you can have campfires, and um, you want to be able to sit around camp at night if you don't have a fire and still enjoy yourself and be comfortable you know so um, this is what I take I gave up on the the fleece uh, you know a long time ago um, it's just too bulky and too heavy um, it's soft but um, doesn't keep you as warm as this and this will just just make it to where you know if it snows on you it doesn't matter you got your down jacket you know and um, the other advantage to it is I can use it for my pillow at night so so this little you know long sleeve shirt that I that I take that's full synthetic but it's a kind of soft and a little bit thicker um, it's a quarter zip shirt so what I'll do is go ahead and you know zip it up all the way at the neck there and then I'll stuff at night when I'm ready to go to bed I'll just stuff my down jacket in there um, and, you know I know some sleeping bag systems have it set up to where it's built into the sleeping bag where you can stuff clothes into a, a pouch or I think Big Agnes does that but um, so I'll just stuff it in there kind of kind of fold the bottom like that and then I just uh, make a knot in the arms you know you just make sure it's all closed up and then I've got you know a nice soft down pillow to lay on at night so that works for me I, you know I've even had guys that were thinking about going backpacking that were asking me, well, what, 
do you have a pillow that I can take? And I kind of laughed at him because, I mean, that, you know, I would never take an extra pillow with me. But I've had people go that that was kind of one of their luxury items. They took a pillow with them. So uh, to each his own. I'm not ultra light, you know, but I like being comfortable. But I don't like taking extra extra stuff. So so anyways, that's you know my down jacket. That's a good uh, final layer, basically. The only thing that might go on top of that, or you know, in case it rains, just make sure you have a lightweight rain jacket. I use the mine's a marmot precip. This is all stuffed into its pocket. Um, a marmot precip, just a lightweight, you know, rain jacket. Um, this one works for me. It's worked for me. I've been in some downpours up in the Sierra, and it fits over my down jacket. You know, if I'm if I'm in a place where it's really cold and windy, um, I can throw this on as kind of like a shell. It's got the pit zips, you know. So I've I've worn it backpacking you know, for miles with uh, a light rain and my pack on, and uh, I was fine. I didn't get too uh, sweaty underneath. It's not top of the line, um, waterproof, breathable stuff, you know, but I can't really afford the top of the line stuff. So I go with what works, you know, all the, it's just practical. I'm just really practical with the kind of stuff that I get. And a lot of it I get at sales, uh, used gear, uh, REI used gear sales and, and that kind of thing too. So um, a lot of it's for cheap, you know. So that's what I take for the rain. Take a beanie, you know, just, uh, you know, pick, take your pick, you know, just your basic beanie. You keep your head warm and then, uh, during the day, I'm usually wearing something like this just to, you know, shade my head because because I need to shade it and, uh, you know, keep the sun off my neck and, and that kind of thing. Um, the next thing, I'll move on, move on to, well, let's see, sunglasses, you know, it's kind of a given. Um, you can decide to take those or not. Um, Headlamp comes in, in handy at night, you know, that way you, you're kind of hands-free um, moving around the tent and that kind of thing um, and around camp. I do take, <laughs> here's a luxury item for you. This is a chair. Um, it's the A-Light Mayfly chair. Uh, it's about a pound. So this thing has a full, uh, you know, backrest, and and it sits low to the ground, so you can kind of recline. Um, it's really nice to have. Um, I'm getting older, so um, you know, I feel it in my back at the end of the day, and I I want something that'll give me some back support to sit around camp instead of sitting on rocks and and logs or up against the tree on the ground. So that kind of gets old. So. <clears throat> But uh, somebody bought me that chair for Christmas, so I'm pretty happy to have it. So <clears throat> it, it works. I love it. It's worth the extra pound. Uh, so yeah, that's about a pound. Um, I take, I usually carry a bladder. This is a, a, a two liter. I don't usually take two liters in it. I, I'll, I'll keep it at one liter, uh, depending on how available the water is. So. You know, if you've got water all along the way, it doesn't make sense to carry it all on your back. Um, you, I mean, it's convenient to fill up two liters at once, but um, it takes me a while to get through just one liter. So, um, you know, three, four hours of hiking, maybe I'll go through a liter of water. So I'll, I'll just, I'll refill along the way if I need to and, and get another liter of water. Um, I like the Camelback because it's really collapsible, you know, so that it's easier to stuff inside of a, 
like a bear can if you were using a bear canister. Um, the bears will go after your bladder, your water bladder, if it had Gatorade or something in it, which I do. I, I take powdered Gatorade and mix it um, in my in my water bladder. So I, you know, I like being able to put this in um, in a bear can. You know, it's easy to stuff in there. Um, I I got my wife the uh, the Osprey one, um, which. It's cool and all, and it's got this shut off and this magnet deal, you know, to where it'll stick right there, the bite valve, and uh, it's got a hard plastic handle there and kind of a hard plastic piece inside so that it makes it easier to, to slide into your pack after your pack is packed, you know, that's usually when you're putting your water bladder in the pack. Um, the bad thing about that, that piece of plastic is, when you go to put it inside, you know, like a bear can, and this is a large bear can, there's no way you can get it in a, in a smaller one. Um, I have to kind of bend it, I could fit it in here. I have to kind of bend it a little bit. It just makes it hard to get in there. And uh, if you're going in, in Yosemite National Park, you have to take a bear can. Um, <clears throat> and they're available to rent at the, uh, at the ranger stations. But, uh, you know, you, you want to put anything in there that smells or that, that has a scent that the bears could pick up on. So, like I said, if you had Gatorade, I had a bear bite into a water bladder that was hanging on a tree that had just a little tiny bit, you know, just trace amounts of Gatorade left in it from the day before. If you can't put, fit your, your bladder in your, in your uh, bear canister, you better rinse it out pretty good because uh, they'll come after it. Um, so that's my advice as far as bladder. I, I like the Camelback, but they, they both work. They, they're, they're both fine. Um, and then I'll take, well, let's, let's talk about the pack I have. The pack I have is a, I have a Gregory Z65. It, it works for me. Um, you know, packs, you've got to try them on and, and see what fits you the best. And, uh, when you're at the store trying them on, make sure you, you throw weights in there. Use the stuff they have. You know, REI has the stuff in the drawers and stuff that you can you could put you know 30 pounds in here if you want and walk around the store for 20 minutes and, and just try it out um, I would recommend that just to see how it feels on you and um, you know I liked this one um, I like Gregory in general uh, but Osprey you know makes great packs and there's different brands Deuter and uh, that you know a bunch of different brands out there that that make great packs um, and then the prices you know you kind of judge based on that um, but this is a 65 liter this is plenty of pack for a week long trip I could go longer with it um, than a week um, so if you're just starting out and you're thinking you're going to do more more three day trips and maybe potentially a week-long trip down the road. You probably don't need to go bigger than 65 liter or 70. 70 liter would be at the most, I, I would think. I mean, that's it's going to have a few more pockets and that kind of thing on it, um, and just a little bit more room. But uh, stay smaller because part of your weight on your back is your pack. You know, you do have to take that into consideration when you're buying packs. And uh, when you're thinking, you know, it, it, that, that's the other thing too. If you've got a pack that's, say, 10 years old, it probably weighs twice as much as this pack, and it's probably the same size. You know, uh, my old pack was top of the line when I bought it 15 years ago, you know. So, it, but it, it weighs seven to eight pounds. This one's like four pounds. 
So right there, I cut four pounds off my pack weight, and it was all in the pack, you know. So, you know, with packs, you're looking at features like what kind of stuff you want. You know, this has a big front pocket. It's except the inside is accessible from the front. The full the front zips um, opens fully to where you can get inside without going through the top. Um, it's got the cool side pockets. I think most of them have those nowadays, but you know the cool side pockets to where you can get to stuff like um, a snack, like a granola bar, or or your camera. I, I keep my camera in there just to have it to where I can get to it and take pictures as I'm hiking, so I don't have to dig into my pack to to get to my camera. You want to keep your camera handy, depending on how many pictures you take. Um, I take a lot of pictures, <clears throat> but uh, so that you know, the 65 is plenty for me. I don't think I'll need to move up anytime soon. Um, if anything, I might get like a 55 or smaller for the weekend hikes that I take. You know, and and a 55 liter would be plenty big for. A three-day hike, four-day hike, five-day hike, even, um, and I, I could probably make it work for a week long and be just fine. Um, so, don't, don't overdo it on the pack size. You know, um, it's nice to have all that extra room. I guess I don't know. This one I never, I never pack it fully out. So, uh, with the kind of stuff that I take. Um, so that's what I take. Uh, I also take a, um, a multi-tool and that serves as my knife and um, um, everything else that I need as far as the, the tool part goes. You know, you've got your knife on there. I don't take another knife with me. That would be redundant. Um, you could though. I guess it's not much more weight. It's nice to have something like this, you know, to, in case you need to yeah, who knows? Who knows what might happen to your pack or something and you need some pliers or something like that to fix something. Um, it's nice to have. So, the next thing is uh, purifying water in the, in the backcountry. So, I've, uh, I used to pump with a water filter and um, that worked fine. Um, and it's still good. But I moved on to a, a stair pin because I got tired of pumping. And uh, especially when I took somebody else backpacking and I had to do all the pumping of the water. So this works with uh, UV light. Basically it's a UV bulb that you put down in the water and in 90 seconds it will do one liter of water or a quart. So um, yeah, a minute and a half. You put it in, no pumping. Um, the water needs to be clear. This comes with a, uh, a pre-filter so that it'll filter out any, um, you know, any stuff in the water. Usually in the high country of the High Sierra, the water's clear um, from the lakes or the streams and uh, you don't have to worry about that. Um, with this thing, you gotta make sure the batteries are good. Um, otherwise it won't work. Um, so that's one thing you want to make sure. Um, this isn't the lightest one uh, or smallest one that they have. Uh, they make some for backpacking. I just got this one at Costco, uh, 50 bucks, and it came with a pre-filter. Um, so it works for me. I don't have to pump, you know, and just make sure you have a backup. It'd be good to have tablets or something like that on hand as a backup. And, uh, you know, worst comes to worst, you can always boil water uh, to purify it. Um, the stair pin will kill viruses. So that's an advantage it has over your typical filter. Uh, the, the filter will just do uh, bacteria. So this will kill everything. So you can take it to Mexico and, you know, stick it in a glass of water and you're good to go. You can drink the water in Mexico. Um, so it's kind of nice for that, you know, as far as the, the viruses go, but, uh, 
Yeah, I've used it for I think three years now and it's it's been good the whole three years. So that works for me. I'll usually take um, uh, a water container to fill up um, at the lake or, or the stream where I'm at. Um, just makes it more handy around camp. I'm not always filling my water with my water bladder, you know. So I'll, I'll take this and then fill my water bladder with the, the, the uh, collapsible canteen here. This is a Nalgene one. Um, I know Palatipus makes them too. Um, it's just nice. This is nice in that you don't have to take like a Lex, uh, Lexan bottle and it, you know the Lexan bottles will take up room and, and they weigh more. You know? uh, this I can just fold up in, into almost nothing and just throw it in my pack when I'm not using it. I can use it to, to get water and it's a wide mouth so I can mix, mix drinks you know, as far as Gatorade goes and, and that kind of thing in there and it's easy enough. Um, the other thing, let's see, what do I take? This is a, uh, a pack cover. So, always good to have a pack cover. Um, I don't use my vestibule on my tents to put my pack in. Uh, a lot of people complain about that on, you know, on like tent reviews that there's not enough room to put all their gear inside the vestibule. <laughs> um, I, all I put in the vestibule in a tent is my boots and my socks that I take off. Um, everything inside the tent is just my pad and my sleeping bag. So. When it's raining outside, you know, everything else except for the food that might be hung up in the tree or in a bear canister is inside my pack. So I, I just use my pack cover. I cover my pack. It's a rainproof, rainproof you know, it's, it's a rain jacket for your, for your pack. And uh, I just lean my pack up against a tree and it's fine. Um, it's worked fine for me through a lot of rainstorms and snowstorms. Uh, when you're hiking on the trail and it's raining, you're going to need a pack cover to keep your stuff dry inside your pack. So um, they make them. They make them for the packs, you know, name brand ones for the pack that you have. It doesn't matter what you get, you can get a generic one too, as long as it fits the size of your pack, um, you're fine. Um, so always good to have a pack cover uh, for, your, for your backpack. Uh, I always take a little tripod, just, I take a lot of pictures when I'm out there, so um, I take a tripod just, you know, if you want to take timed pictures or group pictures or something that needs a little longer exposure um, I take a tripod if you don't take a lot of pictures you could leave that one at home um, I do take a light lightweight pair of gloves these are basically like glove liners just some mountain hardware gloves um, just in case you know if I'm up on a peak or something and I I don't want to keep my hands in my pockets the whole time. I can throw some gloves on. Um, I always have some DEET on hand. I do take the, you know, this is Ben's. It's 98% DEET. Um, it works for keeping the bugs away, the mosquitoes. If you know you're going to be in mosquito country, then uh, Hopefully you have those hip belt pockets on your pack and you can keep that in, in those and keep it handy to where you can just put it on whenever you need it. Um, that's what I would recommend as far as the, the DEET goes. Um, and if you're going to go with DEET, you might as well get the, the strong stuff, you know, the 98% DEET. Um, I've had guys use the you know, the DEET that's in the sunscreen um, that was maybe 20% DEET or something like that. And if the mosquitoes are really swarming, believe me, you're going to want the good stuff. So get the good stuff. 
Um, paracord, it has a lot of uses. Um, I use it mostly to hang up my food. Um, I'll put my food bag inside like a stuff sack and then use another stuff sack to counterbalance it and in a off of a tree limb so that's um, the counterbalance method is what I go with unless you have a bear canister in the Sierra Nevada um, if you're concerned about your hygiene Colgate makes these cool wisp uh, they're kind of like a toothbrush with a little pick kind of flossy thing on the other side and uh, the, the toothpaste is is in the little end on the toothbrush and they're disposable so there's like four in here in a pack that's nice to have you know that way you don't have to take a toothbrush and toothpaste but you know there's guys that that will cut the the toothbrush in half or whatever and, and take a, a small tube of you know, traveler size of uh, toothpaste with them. Uh, that works too. That's fine. A uh, little bit of uh, sunscreen. You know, I probably could have a smaller tube of sunscreen, but uh, yeah, whatever you can get as far as the sunscreen goes. Uh, sometimes I take it, sometimes I don't. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not big on keeping the sunscreen on. But if I know I'm going to be in the full sun all day, I'll put some on. So, there's that. Of course, toilet paper. Uh, you can figure out how much you might need. <laughs> um, I don't take a whole lot, uh, especially for a weekend. But uh, put it in a Ziploc bag, you know, keep it clean and, and uh, dry. Um, don't forget the TP. Mountain money. <clears throat> and then, uh, as far as fire starting, you know, I do have this little flint thing that, um, you know, I can uh, make a spark with. It's like a cool survival thing, but uh, most of the time I'm using a big lighter. Works pretty good for starting fires. This has a, a nice emergency whistle on it though. But uh, you know, have a couple ways to make fires. In case your, your Bic lighter gets wet or your matches get wet, it is nice to have the, the flint with you. A um, little bit of toilet paper and uh, put a spark on that and it'll start right up. Um, next thing, we'll talk about the first aid kit. My first aid kit, is kind of all put together by me so I'll just go through with whatever I grab out of here a uh, little bit of uh, antibiotic ointment you know for cuts and scrapes and that kind of thing uh, always good to have this little thing is just a it's a container of uh, band-aids I got it at the Dollar Tree um, it was just handy I mean it was just small and a bunch of band-aids in there you might need um, and then I'll take uh, a little Ziploc of little pills I might need, like ibuprofen. It, this is ibuprofen and Excedrin in here. Um, so just a, a few of those. Um, and then I've got, you know, just some, some tape for taping, taping up bandages and, and wounds some pads for some big big cuts or scrapes I might get and I need to tape up. And uh, just more bandaging tape, you know, to put around uh, wounds. Um, something big. I did buy some um, butterfly bandages for cuts, you know, if, in case you need to close up a, a big cut, you know, you cut yourself with your knife or something like that. Um, you know, kind of supplement any band-aid you might have with that. Um, I use that. And then, uh, yeah, this one's good. Duct tape. Duct tape is 
has many uses and uh, I've used it from first aid to you know patching like a water bladder a hole punctured into a water bladder and patched it with duct tape so um, just a you know a little small amount of duct tape rolled on itself um, is great to have you can use it for blisters and uh, that kind of thing too or you know preventive measures as far as blisters if you if somebody's in your group that always gets blisters on their heels they probably want to tape up their heels with duct tape before they go um, just so that at least the boot will be rubbing on the duct tape instead of their skin so it can help prevent some blisters that way and when you do get some blisters um, you can just tape them up so you don't have the constant rubbing on them. Um, duct tape is great to have. And it can fix uh, tent leaks and uh, you know that kind of thing too, you know, uh, tears and this and that, you know, uh, just a lot of uses for it. So that's my first aid kit. I kind of just kind of threw it together with the stuff that I use the most. You could also go, you know, look online and, and look at what's in a, a big first aid kit. And uh, probably your best bet, as far as money goes, is to just uh, copy what's in that first aid kit and just buy all the stuff separately. Um, it might be cheaper that way. Um, so, anyways. Um, as far as getting around goes, I do mostly, uh, you know, it's all, it's all topo maps that I use. I have a, a software that I use. It's uh, National Geographic uh, topo software. And um, so I can just print up all my maps on there on, onto paper. And um, that way they're, I don't have to worry about messing them up. They're disposable. Um, the only thing is if you get them wet, it kind of smears the ink on them. So if you print your own maps, um, try and keep them dry, you know, because it'll, it'll all smear on there on your basic printer. I do take a GPS nowadays. I have been lost a couple times, and uh, <laughs> it's nice to have a GPS. Uh, you can also get, you know, uh, GPS on your phones. Um, and without cell reception. As long as you download the maps, then you can have t full topo on your phones too, depending on the app you're going with. So I do have one uh, on my Droid phone that, that has full topo capabilities, and, and so I'll download the maps onto there uh, before I go. And then um, I, I keep my phone in airplane mode, and I can still, your, your phone will still work as a GPS in airplane mode. And uh, that way I've got Topo there. And this is a Garmin uh, Vista CX. So, um, yeah, it's got full Topo on that too. 1 to 24,000 scale, 24K. Um, so that's a nice backup to be able to know exactly where you're at. The next thing would be, this is just a, just a mug that I use. Just a plastic mug, so I'm not carrying something heavy, you know, to drink coffee out of and that kind of thing in the morning. Um, this is an REI one. It, it's kind of cool. It's got a little tripod thing so I can sit it on a log or something uneven and it'll still sit there. So that, that works for me. Um, and then this is my cooking system, basically. Um, this is my uh, titanium pot. It's a Snow Peak titanium pot. Um, and so I keep everything in here for, for a weekend. This is my stove and then my, my little titanium spork uh, that I use to eat with. And uh, so it all folds and goes into there. And then a, a can of uh, propane butane. Um, this will do, the small can will last you a weekend. Uh, it just it depends on how much you're boiling and simmering, but uh, if you're using a lot of stuff where you just boil and you're and you're good, then uh, a small can should last you the whole weekend. 
uh, on a three-day trip, you know, um, three days, two nights. Um, small can will do. Large can for a, a week-long trip. If you're not sure, then take an, an extra small can or something like that. Um, I use the, uh, it's the Soto micro regulator stove. Um, the only reason why I really go with this is because I do snow camping and that kind of thing, so I'm in the cold quite a bit. Um, so this one has a little micro regulator to where the flow won't change too much when you're at high altitude or um, when it's really cold. So if you know you're going to be in like temperatures in like the teens or at really high altitudes, your stove will will not work as good at those high altitudes unless it has a micro regulator on it. I don't know the science behind it, but it works. I've kicked a, you know, I've been up up where uh, it snowed a foot of snow overnight and just brushed the snow off of this thing, found it after I sifted through the snow and then uh, just turned it on and it just fired right up. You know. um, the igniter on it is great. I love the thing. It's a little tricky in the wind, um, but every stove is. Um, so I like it works great um, never had a problem with it the MSR um, I think it's the MSR pocket rockets fine too you know I have friends that have that but when it's really cold it doesn't work you know and so the only other option would be to go with like a liquid fuel stove like uh, the old uh, whisper light you know with the liquid fuel um, then you could go with that and that would work in the cold, but, uh, sorry. <clears throat> but uh, otherwise you gotta have something that'll, that'll work at high altitudes and in the cold. For sleeping, uh, my sleeping bag is the uh, Mountain Hardware Phantom 15. It's a 15 degree, 800 fill down sleeping bag. Um, I like it. The zipper snags a little bit sometimes, um, so that's kind of annoying, but, um, but it works great. You know, with the 800 fill, then you, you've got a bag that will pack down smaller and uh, will be lighter um, than, say, like a 600 fill. So uh, the, the only difference between the downs, as far as the ratings go, is uh, an 800 fill down is going to be loftier than a 600 fill down so it takes less insulation on the 800 fill side than it does than a 600 fill side to get the same amount of warmth so an 800 fill 15 degree bag is going to weigh less and be more um, uh, more packable more packable uh, than a uh, 600 fill 15 degree bag. Does that make sense? I hope so, because I'm not going to explain that more. <laughs> and uh, for a sleeping pad, I've been using the Thermarest Neo Air, um, and it's been great. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 40 years old, so I feel it kind of on my hips and stuff when I'm using just a Thermarest inch and a half pad or an inch pad. And uh, this thing is, you know, two and a half inches of padding and weighs about a pound. Um, and I really love it. Now, you can puncture these things pretty easily, so you don't want to lay this on the bare ground or on some pine needles or something like that. Um, keep it inside a tent or a bivy sack and uh, just make sure you're kind of careful with it. It has worked great for me and, and I sleep great on it. Um, that's the Thermarest Neo Air. 
you know, Big Agnes makes their pads too. Um, my wife has a Big Agnes pad, it's been fine. Um, yeah, just make sure you get the size and the width and the length that you're comfortable with. Um, and any of these blow up kind of pads, it takes a couple minutes to blow them up, but uh, yeah, they're worth it. It's not something you would take on a snow camp trip unless you had one that was rated with a higher R, R value. Um, but, uh, but that one works great for spring to fall. It's awesome. Um, and then my tent is the Quarter Dome, Quarter Dome 3. This is an older version. It's not this year's. This year, actually, REI came out with their Quarter Dome 3, and it's... Uh, it, the package weight came in at four pounds um, so that, that's pretty light for a three-man tent so <clears throat> this one is the uh, quarter dome three a little bit older version it's probably about five pounds so I split that you know you split that between two people two and a half pounds and uh, it makes it worth it it's a very roomy tent for two people and you could fit three if you had to. Um, I have also a two-man um, uh, Hubba Hubba MSR tent, and I like that one too. But in that one, it's definitely a two-man tent. You're right up against each other. So, you know, when I go with the guys, I'd rather have a three-man tent <laughs> to sleep in uh, with somebody else uh, than a two-man. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, you know what? I was gonna go over the food too. You now, there's not. It's. I don't. You know, the the food is is kind of tricky. That that's where you could uh, you could go way overboard, or you know, I, I, you could get really heavy. Uh, Mountain House meals are great. Um, they cost a lot though. And uh, so it, it can get expensive if you're gonna do your entire trip on a mountain house meals, especially if you're going for a week. So, you know, kind of branch out a little bit, you know, look, browse around the uh, grocery store when you're in there and look for this kind of stuff that you can, you can make with just boiled water. So like, you know, things like mac and cheese, um, you know, I like the mac and cheese that has the squeezable cheese packet instead of just the powdered stuff, um, the deluxe, I guess it is, and uh, Idahoan potatoes, instant potatoes, those are awesome. Those, I can get those at like, you know, 98 cents each, and uh, that uh, serves four, um, but uh, yeah, for one guy, there's no way you can eat all the potatoes that come from that 98 cents. And it's instant, instant potatoes, and they're good. They have all kinds of flavors, you know, garlic and four cheeses and all kinds of other ones. The Mountain House meals, if you want to supplement a little bit of your trip with those, um, that's great. I, I use them. Um, I'll do, a, you know, a few meals here and there that are Mountain House just because they're easy. And, uh, but I don't like the packaging. You know, you got the sharp edges and all my food gets put into a plastic bag basically and uh, so that I can hang it up into a stuff sack or stuff it down into uh, a bear canister and uh, so these just aren't very handy so usually I'll just open them, take up. them out of their packaging and, uh, and I put them into Ziploc bags just because it makes them a whole lot softer um, easier to pack in a Ziploc bag. So I'll write on there on a Sharpie, you know, with a Sharpie, eggs, bacon, one cup of water, five, six minutes. It, the instructions that you need and what, you're, what you've got in there. And I just end up putting them all into uh, Ziploc bags. Now I do end up saving the packaging on a couple keep of them. One or two of these to cook them in. And just put those in your pack, you know, and fold them up and put them in, inside your your pack pocket or something like that. So you you can still cook in them, but uh, then you 
at least you've got a mountain house meal that you know packs down a whole lot smaller in a plastic bag or a bear canister a whole lot easier than the original meal the packaging that it came in so that's what I do with that. That sums it up. So time to get out there, hit the trail, be safe, and always let somebody know where you are.